Hello, welcome to episode three of Stacking Wisdom Podcast. Um, we are your hosts, Artem and Alex, and today we're here with Avi. Um, Avi, do you want to tell us about yourself, who you are, maybe a little bit of your background, um, where, you know, where were you born, how did you come about to get into the career where you're at, have you had any sort of experience you know, in dabbling with, with other uh, careers as well, and like, how to, just tell us a little bit about your journey, we just kind of wanted to get a feel of you know, sure. for, for you, but just because we're we weren't able to find maybe a lot of stuff on Instagram and like and like other popular social sites, so it's uh, we'd like to, to kind of give you the platform. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks a lot for you know inviting me over. Uh, I'm actually my background's Indian, okay, mm-hmm. and I came to Canada December 2013. Okay, so it's not been long enough. Uh, I used to study accounting, accounting okay. and finance, and that was my field and. Right after school, I joined in because in India there's a culture about um, right after school, just do your university, mm-hmm. do your college, mm-hmm. don't take a break, finish all the studies, and then just get to work, work life, and you know it just it's just like a stereotype platform that is already set that mm-hmm. there's one stage and the next stage, and you have to follow the same thing mm-hmm. because if you take it, you're gonna be the odd one out. Mm-hmm. But I felt that it, there's there's no shame. There's no nothing. Like you gotta take a break. You gotta feel it out. That what are your interests? What do you like? Which I did not do that. At that time, I was just you know what following everyone. My dad said, mom said, uh, mm-hmm. people are judging you. People are looking. Oh, you know what? You wanna do this? Um, I don't think you can do that just because you know your scores are not high enough, or mm-hmm. you're thinking that okay, you know what? I'm only scoring 60% in this, and my mm-hmm. math is really good, so should I go something with uh, where I'm going to be using more of math? But, you know what, it never really happens. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's so true, because I noticed even with myself, with like, you know, having um, post-secondary education, I, specific courses that I might have interest in at that particular time does not necessarily re- reflect what it is that I might actually wanted to pursue at all, right? So, exactly. I mean, it could be great in math, but you might not really, you know, enjoy, the, you know, doing it every single day, or you might enjoy history, but, exactly. you know, studying it and actually doing it full time mm. is sort of killing your interest towards it completely, and then, you know, like, you start to hate it, right? For exactly. A while. So, I mean, it sounds like you had a, quite a stretch going from accounting to construction, which is seems like oh, very, opposite. very, like, high <laughs> uh, yeah. office job to something that's kind of... Like out in the field and like, you know, managing staff, managing hours, managing people, managing, you know, like so many different things. It's Well, it's not just managing. I actually do the work myself as well. Okay. Okay. uh, So you're very much involved. You're very hands-on. I'm very hands-on. Actually, the course that I did in Toronto Mm -hmm. was building renovation technology. Okay. And that program is actually more, the first two years are more into Mm hands-on. So you got to learn from the basics and you don't actually use nail guns or nailers or any, Mm -hmm. you actually use the finished nails and hammer, or you probably use uh, regular framing nails and a hammer, roofing nails and a hammer, which nobody does that. Everybody mm-hmm. just uses a nail gun, poof, 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 you know, just keep on going because mm-hmm. when you're actually out there working, you, you know, you got to speed it up. You got to finish the job faster mm-hmm. and you got to do it professionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you got to learn the basics. So that's what the course was about to learn of the course. basics and to learn. Uh, every little step what's involved in construction so that was my program over here when i came to canada mm-hmm. but uh yeah my life has been really interesting that i used to be a very artistic person i used mm-hmm. to enjoy art creating stuff very creative i was also in sports uh we used to play soccer okay nice. and yeah i used to play soccer a lot like uh, what's your favorite team <laughs> uh, i used to play a lot and, yeah uh, my favorite team, yeah. like what country-wise, I used sure. to support Brazil. Brazil, okay, yeah. okay. What but about what about actual clubs? Clubs? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a big Man- Manchester United fan. Man United, okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. We're, we're big soccer fans ourselves. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but we used to call it football because you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah soccer. It's, it's called football right. everywhere else in the world, exactly. Like, it's except for country. maybe some places in Canada and some in, in the states, right? Yeah, so, exactly. But uh, what, like, how did how did you come to actual transition where you've you've gone from accounting to that you know that pushed into construction? What made you take that step? And I mean, did you have the support of your parents? Because it seems like you have very conservative parents and they wanted you to kind of stay on track. Mm-hmm. But it seems like you kind of uh, it, 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 it took it a was, little bit, a bit of a turn, right? So it was a big tra- transition for sure. Mm-hmm. But then again, they were always supportive of me. Mm-hmm. They're like, don't just waste time because mm-hmm. time is really precious. It's not mm-hmm. going to come back. Mm-hmm. So I remember that my dad and my uncle my dad's younger brother, they both were sitting with me and they told me that, okay, you know what? 
think about time as a very important thing and they told me that do your reverse calculation uh -huh. so say for example what do you want to see and where you want to see yourself in the next 10 years uh -huh. and try to do the reverse calculation that how much time you're going to need to work this path and to reach there so what do you need to do for uh -huh. that thing uh -huh. and what do you need to study for that thing uh -huh. and what do you need to do right now to take all those steps uh -huh. so now you got a plan so, so how, how, how do you set yourself up for success, right? Kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. So you, it's almost like a strategy, right? So yeah, a little bit of strategy, more so right. than yeah. even mm -hmm. than goals, because it's like you kind of have to almost like draft like a pathway as to how you're gonna get there, right? So mm. I believe, kind of like, we, yeah, like I believe we don't just need goals; we need targets. Mm -hmm. Like in life, mm -hmm. like a lot of people just talk about goals, like have a goal, achieve your mm -hmm. goal. But it's also like in life when you think about everything, when you leave a goal, it's like an up like a big goal right on the top mm -hmm. but you don't know where to get it like mm -hmm. how to get it there mm -hmm. so you got to keep like small targets yeah. so when you have those small targets you keep mm -hmm. achieving them you know but you don't stop you got to hustle because the goal is not just the optimum goal because mm -hmm. when you reach that point you're like okay what do i do mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm here but then again your thoughts change you know and uh, your goals change too so when you have those targets at that point you actually it's like a milestone that you've mm -hmm. reached over there and then you take another step mm -hmm. That being said, like I used to be very artistic and I always wanted to do like something with science, engineering. I was really good at science, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then again, uh, I didn't have that scores. So I was not able to take uh, like without good scores. I was not able to take the science background because medical engineering, you need to have good scores in, sure. in mm -hmm. separate fields. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I went with uh, marketing, business management, and I'm like, okay, since I was not able to do science, I'm going to do the most difficult course or something that I'm gonna excel in because I believe that I have brains for it. I believe that I could do it. Mm -hmm. But then again, I pushed myself to the very limit. So I was doing a bachelor's in commerce, mm -hmm. which is more into business management. And also I took another, which is uh, people call over here CPA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In India it was called CA. Mm -hmm. So that field was one of the most difficult ones and you cannot just get that in easy. Mm -hmm. uh, my first attempt, I cleared the entrance exam, I went in, I'm like, okay, well, you know what, it was not too hard. I went in, I did one year, I did the second year, I gave my exams, everything was going smooth. It's not that easy, to be honest, it's uh, I bet. I definitely, yeah. it was, my social life was dead. <laughs> the only social life was when I go to classes, I meet friends, and after that, you got to come back home and study, mm -hmm. and my time my study time used to vary from 12 to 15 hours a day, like including the classes. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, it's either sleeping or food. So it was all dead. I, I'm like, you know what? I can't do this. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, my second level. And after that, there was a the final level. But the second level, second grade, the moment I gave that exams, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to wait for my results. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's something in me just called and I'm like, you know what, I am done with So that this. was like the turning point. You, you just knew from there on. Eh? I just knew that, like, you know what, sitting behind the computer and working on the balance sheets, numbers, mm -hmm. uh, learning about the contracts, there was a lot. It was a lot to process. I, went, I was doing it, but then again, I'm like, you know what, even if I finish the program, even if I finish the courses, I study the whole thing. I will not, gonna, I'm not going to practice that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use that. I, it's good knowledge that I have it, but then again, I'm not going to use that in my daily life. I don't want to do, keep doing this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I stopped. Mm -hmm. I took a little break. I'm like, I need to figure out what I need to do. I don't know. I'm a creative person, and I've been behind the books this whole time. I don't have a social life, and I used to be very social. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I used, I was uh, vice president of my environment club mm -hmm. in India. Uh, in our school and I used to do a lot of plays and I was in sports so I used to be you know very outgoing very, very yeah. involved very social mm -hmm. so exactly. like it, right? yeah. So, yeah. and now this was like the totally opposite and I'm studying in a room uh, <laughs> with maybe one or two buddies and everyone's mm -hmm. studying you know no one's talking there's only one uh, one thing that we talk is asking a question which is mm -hmm. also you know yeah. something related to aca uh, yeah. academics mm -hmm. then again I'm like you know what it, it, I'm done I'm done so I told my dad and told my mom and they're like, you know what, you're almost there. And after that, it's just your final year. Just finish it off. And, you know, people are going to say that, OK, you actually dropped out in the final year. You're really good. You, everything's going smooth. But then again, I'm like, I explained myself that I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not me. You've mm -hmm. seen me. 
it's not me. I'm totally opposite. I, mm-hmm. I can't really, you know, look at myself doing all this throughout my life. Mm-hmm. So they were supportive. It, it took them like, you know, a little bit of time that, but mm-hmm. I believe after two, three days, they told me that, okay, you know what, take your time, think about yourself, think about where you want to get. Mm-hmm. So that was the meeting. Like my dad and my mm-hmm. uncle, they told me that, okay, where do you want to go? Where do you want to see yourself in the next 10 years? And then make your decision wisely. Mm-hmm. I like how with Indian families, like I have to bring the whole family together in order to, to discuss yeah. big, yeah. big life, life like, changing like, mm-hmm. decisions. Uh, it's right? just so, that we're, yeah. we're all attached emotionally, okay. so yeah. we talk. Uh, we used to live in a joint family before, mm-hmm. and uh, like I was about 12 years when you know my dad's older brother and dad's younger brother they all moved out and they had separate families, separate mm-hmm. houses, and still like big houses. Everyone, there was a point when we were like my dad, my dad's older brother and younger brother, we all had separate floors, but mm-hmm. we used to live in one big family. So every time nice. we were going out, they're like six, <laughs> seven cars that we were, were taking out, and everyone. Yes. We were eight kids within a family, like within the whole house, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone. Whenever there's a guest coming over, you should see it's like a grand feast. It's <laughs> everyone around, and everyone's talking. Every, everything's loud. So it sounds very, very pre- presidential. It's almost like yeah. you're, yeah. you know, you have like a, an escort, like an escort, and then yeah. you have you have like a huge dining area. That, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. We're, so yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, that scale sort of got you, I guess, to thinking about other things that are uh, on the bigger, right. grander yeah. scale kind of thing, right? So that's true. Yeah. So how, what, what, what was the switch? What was the one thing that kind of... What made it, what motivated yeah. you to like get into home building in the first place? Like how, how did you make that transition from like more like, you know, as you said, like the being in, in this uh, seemingly stuck environment in school right. to, you know, being creative with uh, the whole industry and, and home, home building? Home building, okay. So I was looking at myself, I'm like, you know what? I want to have a lifestyle mm-hmm. and for that lifestyle I need to be doing something it's not just you know running the numbers or working or making money because making money it sounds easy but you know what how mm-hmm. the big question is how are you gonna make money mm-hmm. and then another question are you happy making all that money because it's just one thing that you're doing something and you're making money with it but if you're not happy doing that you're not gonna be happy enjoying all the money that you earn mm-hmm. right so at the end of the day you gotta be happy and you gotta be keep making money so for that I just wanted to choose something I'm like I need some time I'm gonna actually take some time and uh, explore myself explore my interests so I joined my dad's business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, which was manufacturing of automobile spare parts okay so it was all management and accounting but then again I left the accounting part I'm like I don't want to do that <laughs> but running the business managing uh, business it was something different and I explored myself and I'm like I can't be doing that I calling all the clients and there were so many clients, you know, asking them for the, a little bit of paperwork or sending payments over and a lot of business in India is cash based and the other half is, you know, electronic. Mm-hmm. But then again, to ask for money, it takes weeks, months for them to send them over because you're not just, you know, you're selling a product, but being a manufacturer, it goes to wholesalers and then it goes to retailers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of time they are not going to pay you until the product is sold. So mm. it takes about somewhere about six months for them to send the payment. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a long, I'm like, how, how, how would I be able Put, to survive? Put your business in such, yeah. a, exactly. such a bind, right? Yeah. But my dad has mm-hmm. been doing that for years. He's been yeah. doing that for ages. Mm-hmm. And uh, within the same industry, he's known for his brand. He's known for the business principles that he has mm-hmm. and the quality product that he offers. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I don't want to do this. So my dad's older brother, he was a sleeping partner with mm-hmm. someone else. And uh, my uncle, being a sleeping partner, he suggested me that, okay, why don't you try the construction? Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, he's a sleeping partner in some other company and uh, he's invested in it. Silent partner, you mean? No, yeah. <laughs> sleeping yeah, sleeping, okay. <laughs> yeah, sound partner, No, yeah. no, no worries. No because worries. Uh, yeah. that's a different term. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, okay. So yeah. he's a sound partner, he just invested in it, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, okay, I, I can give that a try. So I joined that company as an intern. You know, I was uh, learning a lot about construction uh-huh. and the project management, how to do it. So managing and looking at everyone doing, learning the whole trade over there. Uh-huh. Uh, it was only a matter of uh, about a year that I was doing that, a year, a year and a half. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me try it. Looking the business in India, I was like, I don't want to stay here, too much traffic, too much pollution. It was just something in me uh-huh. that, okay, you know what, I'm, I, I don't see myself living in India for a long period of time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How about I 
give it a try. My dad's over here, my brother's here. I could give that a try, give it up, go to New Zealand, London, or, you know, go to States, Canada. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how you had such a, like, <laughs> wide, I guess, spectrum of where you could go in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So why, why made you pick Canada? Because you have relatives here, you said, right? So no. Uh, relatives, there was just one cousin, mm -hmm. and uh, she was married recently, but then again, I'm like, I only have one cousin. Mm -hmm. And all the other locations like New Zealand, uh, London, uh -huh. States, uh, South America, or anywhere else, mm -hmm. uh, we had like people from distant family, like family friends, uh -huh. but we never had like any close relatives. So I'm like, I want to, but then again, you know what? I might have some supporting if I'm feeling down. I have someone to talk to. Of course. Yeah. And you know, like, uh, so that was like, okay, you know what? It might be a little easy, but then again, I need to make sure that, okay, I'm going to be, whatever I'm going to do, I have to excel in it. I got to be successful in that field. So is that really good industry over there? Uh -huh. If I'm going to go to Canada, the industry should be good. London or New Zealand, Australia, anywhere. Mm. So I chose my first preference being Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I went over there. I, give that a, I gave it a shot. I applied for college. I cl applied for construction engineering and building renovation. Uh -huh. And I got my admission in building renovation, so I was really excited. Uh -huh. I'm like, I love art, and I also love science. Uh -huh. And construction is something, it's a collaboration of both. Exactly. Yeah. So you're creating hands, right? something. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. You're using all the science and the knowledge and your skills, uh -huh. and, yeah. you're, and you're using the art to actually creating something uh -huh. beautiful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm like, it's perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And because I loved whatever I did. I'm sorry. Just no, it's okay. That's okay. No, no worries. worries. No worries. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I'll just, you know, put that on silent. <laughs> I should have done that before. Okay. Sorry. I should have done that before, but I uh, never really paid attention to it. Yeah, so, so you decided on Canada because you felt like the industry itself was going to be something that could be useful to you? Uh, but just just the experience from from this country or so why why wasn't it New Zealand why wasn't it England? Canada was my first uh, preference that I'm gonna give that a try. Mm -hmm. I gave it a try. I love Toronto. Right. Mm -hmm. It was my first city to land in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I came here in Toronto, like don't get me wrong, I've been to Switzerland, I've been to yeah, London, I've explored sure. it. But then again, uh, for education and for business prospect for to see myself living mm -hmm. over here mm -hmm. i gave it a shot and i'm like okay i'm gonna you know try one year with education if i like it and i loved it by mm -hmm. the way i loved it so toronto being so diverse mm -hmm. everybody was so welcoming mm -hmm. you know everyone's uh, very polite when you sure. talk to everyone's smiling mm -hmm. and even if you bump into someone it's your fault but somebody else will <laughs> you know apologize that hey i'm sorry yeah. but uh, i quickly adapted myself to uh, you know with everyone and uh, I enjoyed myself within school, so I was like, you know what? I remember that uh, the 10-year plan that I had, that, okay, you know what? I want to see myself over there, so I got to hustle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that word was in my head, that no matter what I do, I need to hustle. Uh, that being said, education, which is in school, I'm learning the hands-on trade. I'm like, I need to learn construction in Toronto, in Canada, so if I have my construction company, I don't want anyone to make a fool out of me that, okay, this is how it's done. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to be, you know, going to YouTube and watching all of that, that, hey, how is it actually done? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to learn from scratch, from the basics. So my education was there, learning everything hands-on, uh, the book knowledge. And after that, uh, my first job was in school, in George Brown, within the very first week uh -huh. of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, it was at Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. So it was also helping me to you know, develop my English accent because mm -hmm. I was in India, I had my education all in English, but then again, uh, the fluency and the way we talk is totally different. Oh, I bet, of yeah. course, because I think yeah. it's it's probably almost like a fluidity of like uh, Indian and then like also English, but then also like adapting to maybe local terms and stuff like that, right? The, so there are. Essentially, yeah. that, 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 I would assume that most likely that's what it would be. Exactly. Right? So, mm -hmm. And in India, when we talk, yeah. it's a mix of both. It's English and Hindi language, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which is the most commonly known language in India. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of languages. Every province has their own set of accent. Every set of, every province has their own language mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. I, I think they say in Canada, it's something like, I think three out of four people work in customer service. So it's mm -hmm. it's great in a sense that it develops the very like the social aspect of you know of um, interacting with with people. But at the mm -hmm. same time. 
working at Tim Hortons, I bet like it kind of motivated you to to kind of keep pushing to keep to pursue that, right? Yeah, to, yeah. to get to that point where you wanted to to go to as well, right? So mm. I really wanted to, and don't get me wrong, like it was not easy. Mm. Uh, like my first uh, three four days, it was a disaster because mm -hmm. I was sitting behind the, like sitting behind a desk at mm -hmm. an office, and there were like twenty people in the office working for me because that was my dad's company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was, you know, within the factory, we had 100 people working, mm -hmm. but, and they all used to listen to my command, but there was something in me that I did not earn it. Like, I'm mm -hmm. sitting behind the desk, I'm mm -hmm. sitting on the chair, and what have I done? Mm -hmm. Like, example, if I'm gonna be there, and I'm looking at myself from someone else's point of view, mm -hmm. and is he gonna respect me? Mm -hmm. Why, because I just, I'm just sitting on the chair, he's respecting the chair, he's listening to my order, but. Uh, he's not respecting me because I did not earn it. As a person, I didn't right? do. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do anything to be able to sit on this chair and give mm -hmm. them a command. Do, do you think you're they would respect you more if you had started at the at the bottom? If your yeah. dad this, had decided to do that, exactly. Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. would respect. Uh, look at anyone who's actually started from the bottom, mm -hmm. and then he's somewhere able to achieve something, and then. Mm -hmm talk to people or not even talk to people you know a lot of people don't really care what other people think but when you start from the bottom and you are somewhere you know how everything works because you made your own way you made your own path mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so how did you how did you make them or I guess earn uh, you know respect for you like what did you do Oh, how? that was in India. Oh, I, I, you okay. know, I left, yeah, I okay, left okay. the whole company and I wanted to do it because that's oh, what okay. I... Mm -hmm. so, so you kind of yeah. wanted like a different challenge. You yeah. kind of wanted and, to... and over there, you know sure. what? My, my dad had a car. He mm -hmm. gave me a car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from driving a Mercedes, I'm over here sweeping up floors at a Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. So, like, <laughs> it's, 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 like, it's like... It's like reality calls, right? Like, exactly. It's like, it's like yeah. we're right, you're right here. Like, it, yeah, it's exactly. not going to be easy. You got to, you know, just start moving things along. Exactly. Kind of like work your way up again. Sort of I had to, yeah. but then again, I was pampered. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, you know, put in a nutshell that okay, you know what, the mm -hmm. world is not that uh, great out there. So mm -hmm. you know, we're we're building something for you. All my business is for you. But then again, I'm like, you know what, if you're gonna be pampering me and uh, you're gonna keep me in that nutshell, I'm never gonna grow. I'm never gonna learn myself. Mm -hmm. You will give me that business, but I will never be able to sustain it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what if something bad happens and I'm not able to survive that business? So it's gonna hurt me that all your business is going down because of me. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to take that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I told him that's the reason. It was another transition to convince him. Mm -hmm. It took me like three months to actually send mm -hmm. me overseas to a different country. Mm -hmm. And uh, that being said, once I came here in Toronto, Tim Hortons was the first job. Uh, after three days, I'm like, I should quit. I was crying. <laughs> I did not call. I did not call my parents. I didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. uh, but my mom was like, you know what, leave that job, you're serving coffees to people. I'm like, it, it, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I was trying to show her that I'm strong, yeah. but inside I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. Like, why, why do I need to? But you know what, mm -hmm. I'm like, if a 15 year old can do that, mm -hmm. and if I can do that right now, uh -huh. something bad happens when I'm 30, 35, and I have kids, and I have a wife, I won't be able to do that. You know what, my ego is, my ego is gonna clash and he's gonna be like, hey, what the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. You're running a company and now you're serving coffees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At that point, I wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. So I need to do it right now right. to actually bring my ego all the way down mm -hmm. and work my way up. So mm -hmm. so you, you try to, to kind of uh, stay humble in, in that position, right? So I, 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 mm -hmm. I literally, my lips were sealed. I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna argue with anyone. I'm just gonna learn mm -hmm. whatever it is. And um, it's not that learning how to serve coffees or make coffees. Mm -hmm. I used to be a baker, mm -hmm. and it's not that I wanted to learn how to be a chef. Mm -hmm. It was my job at that time, but it had a lot of pressure. Like, I used to start at 5 a.m., and by 7 a.m., you have to have everything ready, all the mm -hmm. muffin, bagels, mm -hmm. donuts. Uh, you need to have all the sandwiches, everything ready, mm -hmm. and ready in the shelf, because 7 a.m., they want to open up. And within two hours, getting everything done, and there's only one of one, and within that oven, you gotta, you know, set one by one, set up sure. everything within yeah. two minutes. Well, by the time the oven's working for two minutes, you gotta set up the next trays and the next trays and get mm -hmm. everything lined up. So quickly, you open the doors, move it up, move it on the side, the next one's ready. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, the chocolate and the glazing, mm -hmm. and there's so much. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one. And 7 a.m., well, you know, five minutes before, everyone comes by the shows and they help me to set up everything and they start making the coffees mm -hmm. to open the gates. and first hour is just boom everyone there's a huge lineup at Tim Hortons every morning mm -hmm. and uh, over the weekends I'm like you know what 
working at Tomorrow is not going to help me. I'm in construction. I need to focus. Mm -hmm. So I started walking outside in Etobicoke and Mississauga on the streets, looking at construction sites, mm -hmm. asking my college professors to help me. But then again, you know what? I'm new to the country. Nobody's going to help me because I don't have Canadian experience. I don't mm -hmm. have the Canadian mm -hmm. education. So I mm -hmm. knocked on the doors, construction sites. I'm like, hey, I'm a student. I want to learn the trade. Uh, would you be kind enough to just hire me as a helper? You don't have to pay me. I'm just going to be a free laborer. Uh -huh. just, I just want to see, observe, and learn. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, but when it comes to construction, there's a big constraint. WSIB, accidents, workless. Uh -huh. And if mm -hmm. I don't uh -huh. know all that stuff, mm -hmm. there's a big risk that I might of end course, up yeah. in an accident. Right. Yeah. So almost everyone, you know, told me no. There was a one straight answer. How many of those places did you go to? Uh, how, many you go, how many did more you approach? Mm. Uh, more than 100. More than 100. In, wow. in, this, in the span of how long? Yeah, uh, about like two months. Okay, wow. So, so how many yeah. no's did you hear the, until you heard the yes? Uh, it was, uh, I, I told you I have a cousin, mm -hmm. and uh, they bought a house in Mississauga at that point. Mm -hmm. And they were renovating that, so the contractor they hired, they suggested me because I was learning in school. Mm -hmm. It's been like two and a half months for me that I was in Canada. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, you know what? Uh, we, uh, my cousin is in school and he's learning construction. Would you be able to hire him as a free labor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, okay, free labor. He was ready. So mm -hmm. that was my first break because they, uh, you know, they kind of offered him, mm -hmm. but they never pushed because, you know what, they're building a house and, you know, they're doing the whole trade. It was a renovation, not building a house, but mm -hmm. so they're redoing the whole house, but they want to make sure that the house is done properly because it's their house. Of course. And mm -hmm. then again, uh, it was also that, you know, pushing me, uh, giving me a little push that, okay, you know what, mm -hmm. now you have a, a break. So over the weekend, I used to go there. And they used to work seven days a week. So I joined them, free labor for first month. I'm traveling a lot. And then I requested, I'm like, hey, would you be able to pay me a little bit? Because, you know, I'm traveling uh, from downtown Toronto all the way to Mississauga. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it used to take me an hour and a half to come by. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, it's TDC and then Mississauga Transit. So, and plus lunch, if that's okay with you, would you be able to pay me a little bit, like mm -hmm. maybe minimum wage? Mm -hmm. But... You know, that was a little time a struggle period for me and I used to get paid 60 or 70 dollars a day mm -hmm. and that was underpaid but then mm -hmm. again I'm like you know what whatever they're paying me mm -hmm. it's still fine because uh, I want to learn the trade mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to learn the trade it was uh, it was interesting mm -hmm. the guy was really good the guy was super cheap he used to charge cheap pay cheap but then again uh, the quality of the work was really good mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was a good experience, learning experience for me. And after mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, I kept working with him for a while. Mm -hmm. When there was a day that I was working, I went to his place mm -hmm. in Brampton, uh, somewhere about seven a.m. I was mm -hmm. at the door, but I think his alarm was uh, kind of screwed up, so he did not wake. Uh, it was snowing outside, so I was in his porch, sitting over there and uh, knocking on the door and calling him, he didn't answer the call. Nobody answered yeah, it. Yeah, nobody yeah. answered it. And so about an hour later, he opened the door. He's like, sorry, my alarm screwed up. And I was not, I'm like, it's okay. And he saw me that I'm on the uh, on the patio, freezing my ass. I'm like, oh, why don't you just come in and warm yourself up? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, so I put my jacket down. He gave me a blanket. I was on a couch and <laughs> uh, his wife made me some coffee. And within half hour, we left for work. Uh, that was the thing. He was really good, but he was, you know, not professional when it comes to the timeline mm -hmm. so he used to start his day around 11 a.m and work until 9 p.m mm -hmm. i'm like that's not the way right like you start early and sure. early spend of time course, with your yeah. family yeah mm -hmm. so um we went to work we're working until nine and after that he's like how oh, is that okay if we work a little late because we just want to finish up this work i'm like okay mm -hmm. so in brampton around 12 after 12 there was one bus somewhere up on steels uh like okay uh would you be able to drop me off over there because we're at one traffic signal and there's just one block on the right there's a bus stop mm -hmm. and he has to make a left and he's like oh the bus is like just like uh five ten minutes uh you know you still have time you can mm -hmm. walk over there yeah i'm like you know it's minus 30 it's you know whether <laughs> it's, it was 2014 mm -hmm. somewhere in february late february it was really cold and i remember that that was minus 
it felt like minus 32 at that point mm -hmm. and I'm walking in Brampton in freezing cold and you know I had my hoodie on I had my jacket on and I'm just you know walking like this with a backpack on and I'm just walking slow 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 and then mm -hmm. I saw the bus coming by from the Trinity uh, I don't know what the whole uh, the complex but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just came from there made a left mm -hmm. And did not even stop at the bus stop because nobody was there. <laughs> and I'm walking and I started running. Yeah. I'm like, because the next bus is an hour later. Yeah. Oh, and goodness. I'm like, it's not gonna work. I started running. I kept running, but the bus was long gone. It mm -hmm. just just took off, right? <laughs> yeah. And I turn around, and I look at the car, and his van was gone as well. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, it's almost one. There's no one around. It's minus 32. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm cold. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And uh, I did not even have cash to, you know, pay the cab. And I'm like, if I, from this point, if I go all the way to Etobicoke, North Carolina, where, I was, where I was living, I'm mm -hmm. like, it's going to cost me somewhere about 40, 50 bucks taking a cab. Mm -hmm. I started walking. <laughs> I started walking. Being a student, you know what? You really shorten cash. Yeah. You have to be very frugal, right? So, yeah. 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 So I started walking and I'm walking. And at that point, I'm like, my lips were getting numb. And it was... Uh, you know, but how come you didn't have a coat, man? That's that's the question. Like, I, why why no coat? It's just it, it, just because you're being so frugal, you just kind of you thought you could just, just get by. Eh? I'm like, you know what? There might be another bus coming by. Maybe somebody's gonna help me. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. walking, and you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna go back to working with this guy anymore. He did not even help me. Mm -hmm. It was just that, that was like the wake up call, right? Exactly. This whole, yeah. this whole yeah. scenario. And I'm like, I'm just working for him for free. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know he's just paying me for traveling 50 60 bucks uh, mm -hmm. per day it's taking it's advantage of you and then not yeah. only that but you're always late and I was then, learning yeah, yeah. I, I was mm -hmm. gaining a lot like the experience mm -hmm. that I was learning it was mm -hmm. a lot yeah but then again I'm like it's not worth it like I spent all day mm -hmm. somewhere about 12 hours more than 12 hours a day mm -hmm. and it didn't feel right it didn't feel something in me I'm like you know what if he took a right, dropped me off, and then made a U-turn, mm -hmm. would only, you know, taken him maybe 60 more seconds or maybe two more minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would have helped me, but he was not even, you know, able to help me for those two minutes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, set aside whatever he pays me, set aside whatever he has done. Mm -hmm. He's uh, taught me a lot, but then again, the timeline and the professionalism, uh, I was like, it's funny, it, it almost yeah. sounds like it was like a, you know, a point where you almost hit like a crossroads, right? Yeah. And it's like, he went to the left, you went to the right. Exactly. And then from there on, it, like, it became almost like, yeah. you, exactly. you, you went on your own way. Mm -hmm. So was, is that, was that the point where you kind of said to yourself, I want to start my own business and I just want to move forward with this? This was or? in 2014. No, no, okay. no. Okay. I had a long way. I still mm -hmm. had a long way to, you know, there is still a long way for me to mm -hmm. learn. But then mm -hmm. again, I, you know, I made a decision that, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? I'm not gonna work for free for anyone. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. let people take advantage of me. So I was walking mm -hmm. at that point. It mm -hmm. was somewhere about a uh, quarter to two, mm -hmm. and I'm shivering. And I was literally, I was literally crying. Mm -hmm. Some quarter to two. There's no one around. Nobody can help me. And at that point, I forgot about the cab because mm -hmm. I was just freezing. I was my brain was going numb, mm -hmm. and uh, because I was crying. My all my eyelashes were frozen. Mm -hmm. It was just getting tired, and I'm like, I can't do it. And there mm -hmm. was uh, not in service uh, bus. Yeah, it just passed by. It saw me, mm -hmm. and I looked around, and I just turned around. And he saw me, and I'm like, I can't even, you know, take my hands out and you know ask him to stop or something. Mm -hmm. But the guy was generous enough. And he stopped. Mm -hmm. It was not in service. He stopped, and he's like, What are you doing out here? I'm like. I was waiting for my bus. I missed it. The next bus is somewhere about another oh, right half away. hour. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, now, I don't know. Like, I'm just walking and, you know, just looking for something. He's like, where are you going? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to North York. He's like, I'm actually heading towards the same direction, but I'm not going to go that far. Mm -hmm. So any far, just warm yourself up. So we were talking and he, you know, he even had his coffee. He just bought a, a brand new coffee and he gave me, you know what, take the coffee. Yeah. And... Uh, I was warming myself up. He was a really nice guy. He helped me. He even called uh, the next bus uh, mm -hmm. from the radio, and he's like, you know what? I got someone who needs help, and he's heading towards that direction. So I might be like uh, a minute late, mm -hmm. but just hold on over there. And just mm -hmm. take this guy. It, it sounds like a very, a very Canadian story where yeah. where people are always uh, like they'll. The mm -hmm. people that you least expect to, to kind of help you out exactly. are always yeah. 
kind of step up and like you know and go out of their way to to kind of do true. this this kind of thing. So mm, I've, I've experienced a lot of similar stories and I've heard a lot of people tell me this is similar stories as well. Mm, yeah. But it, it's it's crazy how it seems like it's uh, you know that was sort of the turning point for you where you. Mm. You kind of had that really negative experience, negative experience but then it's like sort that, of yeah. you, you know you turn that into positive mm-hmm. because it made you realize a lot of things about your, your career yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Was it was it that point though, like or or did you always have like sort of an entrepreneurial drive? Like like did, was it did, was it something that you grew up with like as a as a kid? Wanting? I always did. I yeah. always did. Like I was like mm-hmm. you know what, no matter what I do, I want to have my own mm-hmm. business because mm-hmm. that's what I grew up with. I saw my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw my. You always looked up to him. For I always looked up yeah. to him, and that is you know everyone's like. You look up to your father. You learn a lot from him. Of no course. matter what he is, no matter what they do in life, but you always look at the good stuff in them, and mm-hmm. you learn from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that being said, I was, you know, I, w- I always had that entrepreneurial thing in me, and I'm mm-hmm. like, but I still uh, wanted to learn the trade. So after mm-hmm. that, the moment I got home, I was uh, had like a frostbite on my toe, and mm-hmm. I was freezing, and my brother was sleeping. And uh, uh, sorry, at that point, my brother also came to Canada, mm-hmm. and it was only a month that he came to Canada. At that point, because he was doing accounting, mm-hmm. and he took a course. <laughs> and I'm so, like, so your dad exactly. found the <laughs> replacement, right? That's such and, like no, my dad actually <laughs> felt like my dad felt like everybody's leaving because yeah. uh, he's my got goodness. two sons. Yeah, one <laughs> left a year ago, and then the other one left. Followed on the same yeah, path. Followed the same path, yeah. and they're both in Canada now, <laughs> and we're living together. We like instead of roommates, you know, it's just better that we live together. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we were living in a basement in, the, in North York. So I, I left uh, uh, the moment I got home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was there. He was sleeping. He did not even pay attention to me. He did not even knew that I'm there. I, <laughs> uh, you know, took, like, took my jackets off mm-hmm. and whatever the clothes that I had, I'm like, if I just sleep in this one, I'm gonna be cold for a long because they're all freezing cold. Mm-hmm. So I took my clothes off and I put a lot of clothes. I had like uh, probably two track pants mm-hmm. and a hoodie, and then I took like uh, a blanket over me or maybe two blankets over me, and I slept. And the next morning, I woke up around, like, I did not even go to school the next day, and I'm glad I did not had uh, the Tim Hortons job the early next day. Mm-hmm. So I kind of took the day. I went to school. I missed my two classes, mm-hmm. but then again, I went to school the next day, the following day, and I was home just taking a rest because I was sick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I called up my cousin. I'm like, hey, I'm just sick. I'm not feeling good. So could you help me? What should I do? Mm. Like just uh, you know take some Tylenol, drink some soup, and I'm like okay, so that's what I did. I just you know I'm like I'm not gonna cook soup because I don't feel it. I just walked out to Timmy's, grabbed some soup, came back, and you know had a Tylenol. And I was thinking a lot that day that okay, what I need to do? Like, can I let all the people exploit me? Mm-hmm. Because you know, it was exploitation. Uh, they're not mm-hmm. paying me, mm-hmm. and for whatever the whole experience was. So I'm like okay, whatever. I'm just gonna look forward and I'm gonna learn so I don't have to look back and I can't have any other person exploit me. Mm-hmm. So I went to school, I spoke to my professor about it and they're like, oh, you can't let people exploit you. So I'm like, well, thank you. I know that, <laughs> but they were generous enough to actually you know, help me with the interviews and mm-hmm. explore myself mm-hmm. and which field I like. Do I like finished carpentry, framing, mm-hmm. roofing? Mm-hmm. Like whatever you like, just go with it. So what did you end up picking for, for from that? The I went to general contractor. Okay. I'm like, because yeah. I wanted to learn, I wanted right. to explore myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they helped me too, and after that, I'm working with another contractor, and uh, after that, another contractor mm-hmm. uh, started just you know exploring myself, which trade I like, which contractor like, because I was picking up different contractors to learn, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone had something different to teach. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people had their prices low, but then again, you know what? It was a big learning curve for me. So I pick and choose like a few months for this contractor, and then I'm like, I found another opportunity. So I jumped on to the next one mm-hmm. and the next one. So I had like different people teaching me different stuff. Mm-hmm. And let's just say tile. So they, everyone had a different way of doing the tiles. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's always a learning curve. So it, what, what, what are the, some of the big lessons that you can take away from the people that you worked with? I mean, obviously, like you said, everybody is different in terms of what they can teach you about actually doing work. But mm-hmm. was there anything that you sort of learned from doing hard work and hard labor? Because you kind of moved on from that, you know, 
from like being with your dad and working with his company into something that's completely different. It was very hands-on. It's it's right. almost like you wanted to kind of go out and prove yourself mm-hmm. in the sense that you you kind of wanted to earn his respect, but at the same time you wanted to do it in your own. But you picked like the, you know the the, actually the, the to, harder thing. I actually right? wanted Where, to prove myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like I wanted yeah. to prove myself that okay I'm worthy enough of doing something mm-hmm. on my own and mm-hmm. not just uh, you know taking a crown or taking a chair or just being given something sure. or handed over to me that okay you know what mm-hmm. I've done a lot of my part you're my son take my business and yeah. run my business mm-hmm. I'm like okay what why I've not earned it so that was another reason that okay I wanted to prove myself that I'm worthy enough to do something on my own mm-hmm. and if I can do something on my own I can start something on my own and I can be the person who actually starts his own business and or you know do something and reach mm-hmm. at a certain point that okay you know what I can tell my kids the same story that you know every father tells that okay mm-hmm. I came to this country or I came to this city with 10 bucks in my pocket <laughs> but yeah. I actually had more than 10 bucks in my pocket because you know international student we yeah. had to bring a certain set of money of to course. prove them okay yeah. mm-hmm. and the education was really expensive mm-hmm. it's like at least a triple and I think it really depends on what the industry and the thing is it's just funny cuz it's like you came and then you sort of gave into you know into uh, things and people started taking advantage of you it's almost came came to that Sort of culmination with that weather, then mm-hmm. where you got stuck, but and then you know yeah. people sort of started changing their their way, and they actually started you know but it was being, a good being thing. Uh, you know helpful to you because like with that bus driver, exactly. right? So, I mean, mm-hmm. It was a good thing because it was a, a big learning curve because mm-hmm. I was yeah. in the real world out there without uh, my dad's umbrella over me, mm-hmm. and you know so I'm actually experiencing everything myself, and I'm learning from sure. all those mistakes or all those experiences. Mm-hmm. So so one, once again, what what are some of the like I guess the biggest life lessons that you've learned from people that you worked with, you know, the, mm-hmm. the contractors and the other businesses as well. What, what, can, you know, what, what can you take away from, from it other than, you know, the, like, the hands-on experience, obviously, that, that you, you were able to Hands-on make. experience, definitely. I learned a lot from them. Mm-hmm. But then again, uh, there's one thing that I learned from a lot of uh, different contractors and the companies that I work for is staying humble. Mm-hmm. No matter how much money do we have, no matter mm-hmm. what we have, staying humble is the best thing because wherever you are mm-hmm. if you forget your roots where you began from mm-hmm. then you're gonna drop back to same spot one day and you won't be able to take that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so always stay humble help anyone who's actually starting their own thing or anyone who actually is at a position who has capability to learn and grow mm-hmm. so right. just you know help them out push uh, give them a little push that mm-hmm. okay if they are capable enough they're gonna make their own way mm-hmm. but your Experiences can help a lot to the people. Mm. So, are you helping any, any new kids that are sort of just getting into into it as well? Mm. That I you do. Have, w- w- you know, mm. working with you now. I do. Yeah. So, a lot of people, because when I was working at a job and I was a project manager for that company, mm. I hired two people from George Brown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were students and they were learning, and um, they wanted something for a few weeks because of their internship, mm-hmm. uh, for work experience. They wanted something, and after that, one of the one of the guy he actually joined me full time. Mm-hmm. Nice. So yeah, so I was actually pushing. I'm like, anybody need a job? Anybody needs a work experience? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it'll be a safe environment. I've been through that. I was looking. I just wanted to, you know, the same transition that I've been through. I was looking, walking on the streets and finding a job for myself to gain the work experience. Mm-hmm. Somebody needs it. I can help you out with it. Mm-hmm. So, being a project manager in that company, I was able to help a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I hired a lot of people. Uh, actually funny story I landed that job right after graduation mm-hmm. and uh, I was working as a labor and within two months that he saw that okay you know what I'm more than a labor uh-huh. I'm doing a lot of work there was already a supervisor but I was like second in command I was doing a lot of work you know and was it because was, they noticed your leadership qualities or the, the, is it was, was it because they knew that was your education mm-hmm. or so you actually tried to like push I, I, I yourself, think, right? Okay. Mm. I think it was a mix of everything because mm. I was just I wanted to learn and I wanted to show the boss that okay, what all can I do? Mm-hmm. So I used to ask for opportunities. Initially, obviously, when you're doing, you know, you're helping someone move the stuff, you know, mm-hmm. bring the travel sheet up, bring the plywood here, mm-hmm. you know, just move around. And then they used to ask me, "Can you do this?" I'm like, "Yes, I can." Mm-hmm. And not just yes, you can. Then okay, you know, you gotta prove it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just from one thing and I offered them okay you know what if you want me to do this I know how to do that he asked me two three questions it was about uh, trim finished carpentry like mm-hmm. so I asked him okay you know what I can do that I've done that he's like okay you know what there's one closet door give that a try and we'll see 
so from there uh, from that point when I gave that a try and he's like he took the supervisor he's like okay you know what why don't you guys work on something else let this guy take care of all the work because oh, I was yeah. you know doing good mm-hmm. so I started taking initiatives I asked him that okay I can do this I can do that it was you know mix of everything because working for a contractor you know it's a mix of everything it's of not course. just one trick yeah. yeah so I was you know making my way over there and within that company uh the supervisor quit for some reason they had an argument mm-hmm. and so i was the next in line and he, you know he promoted me he's like you know what you still have a long way to go but then again instead of uh, me having someone else you know the way we mm-hmm. work the way we operate mm-hmm. so you're next in charge so, so you guys you yeah. got the opportunity to step up and uh, you were able to fill those shoes eh? exactly okay. my pay yeah. did not increase <laughs> i was still working for uh mm-hmm. at that point in 2015 i believe i was working mm-hmm. for 15 bucks an hour yeah and i was given the title supervisor <laughs> how was that again it was a lot of responsibilities yeah. it was a big learning curve for me i'm like you know what screw mm-hmm. the money money is something that okay i can learn in future but the work Mm. The amount of work that I can do and the responsibilities I can take on myself, mm-hmm. the experience that I can gain from this thing, mm-hmm. that's what's going to help me to, you know, take another step. And then if I go to another company and I can tell them that I've been doing a lot of this work, it's just that, you know, my pay was low, mm-hmm. but I have experience and I can prove them with a lot of my work that I do mm-hmm. with all the skill set. So I started working and after that, I was their project manager within the same company. Uh that company started making houses and I built five houses with them modern houses custom home building mm-hmm. uh, he was also a project manager himself so he was taking more of the financial part of the construction company mm-hmm. and the planning part where you know he's called he's the one who's taking calls for who's gonna be the concrete guys foundation guys who's gonna who, he, who which subtrade is gonna hire mm-hmm. and I was in charge of actually uh, on-site supervisor taking control of everything then and managing everyone that okay you know what as for the drawings it's supposed to be this and you know uh-huh. I was always on site mm-hmm. and uh, that being said a lot of responsibilities and a lot of experiences uh, one ha- I used to be very careless too careless mm-hmm. as in like because I just wanted to learn as much as I can within the short span of time because mm-hmm. I had that I got to reach my target so yeah. I, wanna, I don't have much time I want to learn as much as uh-huh. I can mm-hmm. And then I'm like, one day I wanted to do something really fancy. I was looking at Instagram and like people are, people had those, you know, the tree trunk slabs and, mm-hmm. you know, the, the natural wood slabs. They're making countertops with it. They're making tables with it. Mm-hmm. So I told my boss, I'm like, hey, you know what? Why don't you get something for the basement bar? We're going to do something and I'll, you know, I'll use a router. We'll make a sink. And he's like, because he knew that, that what I'm capable of and I was doing it. I'm like, okay, sure. Mm-hmm. But the router is something that you cannot trust very easily. Like mm-hmm. you have to have a really proper grip with it. And I uh, was without a template. I was just you know working my way with the router with one hand. And the template, instead of clamping it proper, I was holding and I was just working. And the moment I started digging in, mm-hmm. within the first, I believe, one or two seconds, I had an accident right there. Mm-hmm. I had my safety glasses. I did not, I'm glad that I did not have uh, working gloves at that point. I don't know what would have happened. Mm-hmm. But then again, there was a guy right beside me. He was really muscular, you know, construction guys. Mm-hmm. I was skinny, but then again, he's muscular. He's helping me. And I'm holding the guide and I'm using a router. And within like one or two seconds, it was a flash. The router has so much torque, so much RPM. It just, you know, hit my hand. Mm-hmm. So it hit my knuckle over here. Uh, it actually tossed off a chunk of the bone mm-hmm. uh-huh. somewhere I did not even see like over here it came mm-hmm. all the way here yeah. uh, until my thumb mm-hmm. and it's spinning and it's just there and I'm like holy shit mm-hmm. and my finger just dropped like this mm-hmm. it was lower and I'm like I'm like I turned the machine off I let it on the side right now a lot of adrenaline is blowing a lot of blood is flowing out uh-huh. mm-hmm. and the muscular guy he's, he's really and he's looking Mm-hmm. And he passed out because he's afraid he's of blood. Some, some yeah. <laughs> and his muscles were like this big. But then again, you know, people yeah. are that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people can look at blood. Yeah. And he passed out. Mm-hmm. And and at that point, I saw him, 
And I'm like, no, I'm in deep shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I literally, no, nah, literally fucked up. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, wow. I just hold, held my hand and uh, there were no rags over there. I don't want to use dirty rags, mm-hmm. you know, on that. Mm-hmm. So there was a paper towel roll and there was, I just picked it up, wrapped my hand around and mm-hmm. I was screaming my boss's name. Mm-hmm. And he just ran quickly. He saw me and he's like, okay, you know what, we gotta go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was uh, kind enough, he took me to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, the moment we were there at the emergency, his wife just showed up to the house with some material and then she's like, hey, how's it going with the work? I just saw some blood, is everyone okay? Yeah. And then, and they were like, oh, just Abby just cut his hand and you know, mm-hmm. we're just at the uh, emergency, like, oh, is he okay? And then she's like, oh, wait, I just saw a piece of bone here. <laughs> <laughs> and she started freaking out. Yeah. And I did not even know that, okay, I just thought it's a flesh cut. Yeah. I did not oh, know goodness. that, okay, you know what, I cut the bone, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they did some temporary stitches. Uh, it took me, like, at the hospital, it took me two hours for someone to look at my hand and mm-hmm. stitch me up and give me the first aid. Yeah. So that being said, after that, I'm like, you know what? This is it. You know, this is another turning point. This is where I, I should not be careless now. And mm-hmm. this is not 15 bucks an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm worth way more than that. And I'm like, I, I don't want to work with this company anymore. Mm-hmm. But then again, with this injury, who's going to hire me? Nobody wants to work with me anymore. So yeah. I, was, I had so many thoughts in my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking up because they told me that there's another appointment uh, two days later. Mm-hmm. So, uh, 21st of October, I had uh, I went to another hand specialist just to show my hand, and it was around one, one p.m. that he looked at my hand. He's like, "Oh, just wait a few more hours, and we'll get back to you." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so he was really busy, yeah. and he's just in and out of every room, and he had like maybe 15 rooms lined up, <laughs> and going to every room one by one, and he's spending not more than two minutes with anyone, and he's just going, and the moment he walks out, the patient goes out, and the next patient's in. So he was really busy, mm-hmm. and I'm like, if he wants me to wait, I don't know, like, is there something serious? What does he want to talk with me? I'm just, mm-hmm. he just, again. Your mind starts running, right? Yeah. The, the, all, these, all these ideas of, mm-hmm. of, of exactly. possible do- yeah. do- do- scenario, right? So, mm-hmm. at that point, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, around 3.30, he told me just, okay, you know what? We're taking you to the uh, operation theater. We're going to stitch up your hand. It needs to be done right now, or you're going to lose your finger. Mm-hmm. My I'm goodness. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay my thoughts were whatever let's just go okay mm-hmm. do whatever you have to i trust you i just know i just knew his name i did not even research about him that is, if he is he the best surgeon or is there someone else mm-hmm. i was just concerned about my hand and i'm like let's just go mm-hmm. let's just go uh, they froze my hand and i'm up just lying and you know uh i could feel that something's happening my hands frozen after a while, they told me they stitched my hand. There's tendons, uh, tendons were cut, ligaments were cut, the bone was cut. They did the temporary stitching, and after that, they're like, "Okay, we're gonna look into more possibilities of surgeries." Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the meantime, we cannot do it. It needs to your hand needs to heal before we go for the next surgery. Mm-hmm. So, so it seems like a very was very <laughs> long and dragged out process, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So how long how long yeah. did it take you for you? To, to heal your hand so you were able to go back to work or like what, what was what was the, the, the I guess it, what happened from then on like did, was that the point where you kind of decided to do your own business or what still too far <laughs> too far still too far, still so, too far. okay fair enough I was uh, within the company uh, it took me like about a month mm-hmm. almost a month for me to you know because I was at a bed rest I can't lift up my hand mm-hmm. I can't move my fingers because all these fingers are right here, they're connected together. Mm-hmm. Of course. So it's not just one finger, I can't move any finger, because the moment I try to move this one, this finger pains, mm-hmm. and it was really painful. And I had a cast, like I gotta go to physiotherapy, start yeah, exercising. Yeah, all that stuff yeah, right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. So uh, the physiotherapy was helpful, they're helping me, I went back to my, uh, my boss was calling me that, hey, you know what, you need to come back for mm-hmm. modified services, mm-hmm. WSIB is paying me, but I need to get back to work somehow or else, you know, I'm going to get used to the life of getting paid and not, you know, my brain is going to tell me that, okay, I'm not going to feel better. Because when you start working, you feel happy, 
you know get your mind off off of things too right exactly exactly yeah because when you're home your mind's empty Mm. and you know you have negative thoughts that okay Mm -hmm. what's gonna happen i won't be able to work i can't work blah 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 Mm -hmm. so at that point i started working with the same company and the he initiated another business of constructing materials Mm -hmm. so he was bringing a lot of stuff from china and then he's like okay you know what why don't you help me with this i'm gonna hire more people for the construction business uh, you can guide them. You can, you know, tell them what needs to be done. You can, mm-hmm. you know, manage all the employees. You can take care of that. And also the new startup that I'm working on, mm-hmm. you can help me. So I was helping him with the web designing. So I was talking to the web designer, taking care of the websites and the material coming in, the shipments, controlling, you know, mm-hmm. for the warehouse where it needs to be, you know, and uh, making the whole chart, designing that which tile, which hardwood floor, which laminate. So everything we were just looking into that and then this business too and at that point I also felt that you know what because every company feels that because they're paying me for a few hours well like I'm working a few hours but they're paying me a lot mm-hmm. for me I'm like I've given my blood sweat and you know all my my couple years of life everything I've given a lot towards this company towards growing myself and uh, you know benefit of the company and in reverse, I felt that, okay, you know what? Stuff has changed. Mm-hmm. I felt the way, you know, people were talking to me. So I did not feel happy working within the company anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I felt that, okay, I'm just like a burden on the company. And so I quit. Mm-hmm. I gave them my notice that, okay, you know what? This is my two weeks. I thought the company, you know, my boss will be a generous and he's going to ask me to, uh, you know, stay because I worked with him so much, I helped him, even if he was traveling, he used to travel a lot, he used to go to Vegas for two weeks, he used to go to Mexico, he goes mm-hmm. to Punta Cana for weeks, and mm-hmm. I used to take mm-hmm. care of all his business. There was also one time when he was in Punta Cana, and I was uh, running his uh, business, the whole construction site, by myself, mm-hmm. and uh, w, uh, I think, not WSIB, uh, Labor Ministry, Ministry mm-hmm. of Labor came by, mm-hmm. and, uh, they actually shut down the site because uh, there were some issues with it and they're like, okay. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Mm-hmm. I'm not experienced with that. Yeah. I never had Ministry of Labor mm-hmm. walk into my site and then because this, uh, there was the stucco contractor, he had his stucco, uh, he had his uh, scaffolding uneven. Mm-hmm. So the base was uneven, the scaffold was all level, but mm-hmm. the bases were uneven. So mm-hmm. they asked us to take them the whole scaffold down level the whole ground take a lot of garbage put that in the bin it was uh it took us like two days to get everything done mm-hmm. uh but since i was not able to get hold of him it was just emails that i was getting in touch but everything i had to do myself it was a big learning experience that how should i take care of that situation so I moved as, on. as negative as i was i think it's it's great because it's almost like that's that accident kind of you know puts you in a position where you've you've learned the the much more of a managerial side of the business too right, right. but and then it kind of uh, you know puts you on the path where you've had to experience a lot of stuff along the way that was sort of you know like very kind of extreme situations but at the same time it kind of i think that in itself sort of boosted up your confidence too right and it, and it, it allowed you to it kind of experience that mm. and like once you've had the experience with that it's it made you uh, kind of a lot more fearless probably going forward right so yeah. <laughs> not really fearless i wouldn't say that fearless i, I was actually fearful okay I, i'm like you know what i'm fearful for my life i, I don't want to you know what if i lost my hand mm. yeah that was something that i would never have imagined i'm like you know what i'm still young i was 24 and i almost lost a finger mm-hmm. i'm like i don't want to be in a situation where i i can't even use my hand mm-hmm. Like it's, it sounds very normal to anyone. It sounds very easy for anyone to yeah. actually just, you know, think, oh, my God, you know what? One finger. OK, it's not going to happen to me. Right. But yeah. you said yourself, you were you were very uh, it's, it's, you, were, you were very pursuant mm-hmm. and you were somewhat careless, too. Right. To I was time. very careless. Yeah. So it, it's, it's mm-hmm. almost like life decided to teach you that lesson to mm-hmm. to, to, to kind of you. you I, th- I think I'm sure you'll carry it with you for the rest of your life. Right. I would. I would. There was one yeah. point. I still remember that uh, the day the Ministry of Labor walked into the construction site, mm-hmm. I was on the scaffold because I was also doing uh, cedar sidings. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I was using his uh, the stucco guy's uh, scaffold. So it was about three floors up, mm-hmm. like or on top of the house. I was just finishing up something. So I had a step ladder 
on top of a scaffold on the top high <laughs> and I was very on top without any harness and I'm just oh working and somebody was like hey the Ministry of Labor is down like I'm like I'm like I know everybody says that but they're never on yeah and then there's this one lady down there and she's she saw the car I'm like she said I'm from Ministry of Labor please walk down mm -hmm. I'm like are you sure and then she's like what do you mean are you sure that's very unsafe what you're doing there I'm mm -hmm. like I'm like, okay, just give me two minutes. Let me finish this up. <laughs> yeah. I was so careless. And then she's yeah. like, just get down. <laughs> mm. I got down. I took the ladder. And half of the people got scared, so they were running away. <laughs> My I'm, like, I'm like, okay, well, what, what's good going to happen of running away? Yeah. So we were talking. I was talking to them. Uh, lucky enough, they just you know, turned the side off. They did not find us. They gave us the warning and they told us to fix everything and you you're know, lucky, be careful. Man, you're lucky. <laughs> I was very lucky at that point. I was very lucky at that point. I was very careful too because I just wanted to see that beautiful house being done and I was doing something mm -hmm. very pretty. Cedar yeah. sidings on top of the house. It was just flowing down all the way and I'm like, I need that done. I want to see <laughs> this house and I was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like creative. I wanted to do that. So, that being said. That was a big learning curve, and once I quit that job, within like an hour, he accepted my resignation. Mm -hmm. Like he did not even say anything. He did not even question that why do I want to leave. He yeah. just accepted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he was expecting me to quit, or maybe he was doing that on purpose, mm -hmm. so I quit, and he does not have to pay me anything. Mm -hmm. So there was another thing. I'm like, you know what, whatever. I just want to move on. I want to be happy in my life with whatever situation mm -hmm. I am. I'm not happy here. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I contacted George Brown, uh, being an alumna over there. So they were, you know, they put my profile back in, uh, in the hiring. They had something with the hiring uh -huh. uh, students. Usually a lot of yeah, the colleges, they, they help you get yeah. a job after you graduate yeah. because mm -hmm. it's in their interest to uh, keep their employment numbers up for, for the exactly. past yeah. graduates, right? Yeah. So especially mm -hmm. then, yeah. So they helped me out and uh, somebody got in touch with me. It was an Italian contractor. And uh, I, uh, you know, I just gave my interview over the phone. I met them, and he looked at my hand. That okay, you know what? I still had injury. It uh -huh. was not hundred percent. And I told him that okay, you know what? I can work. I can do everything. But then again, it's there might be a few days that I might have to leave like an hour early because I have to go for my physiotherapy. Sure. And mm -hmm. I used to, you know, uh, schedule it during the work days because it's only work days. It's not weekends. Mm -hmm. So I scheduled it during the work days, but at 4 p.m. so I can leave at 3.30 and go to the hospital and you know it's not gonna be that I'm going during the day and then coming back to work it's not right in the middle of the day mm -hmm. uh, he was comfortable he was really humble and really kind mm -hmm. and uh, lots and lots of experience he was doing that for 30 35 years Wow! Mm -hmm. and uh, lots of experience a really amazing guy I worked for him for a long time for almost two years mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, you know what was his name Ricardo Ricardo mm -hmm. okay yeah Ricardo mm -hmm. uh, I still remember him I worked with him for a good amount of time mm -hmm. every day and he was a guy he, he used to enjoy doing the same thing he, we shared the passion towards construction we shared the knowledge that we want to do something beautiful for the client it doesn't matter that if it's going to take us an extra half a day mm -hmm. but he wanted to deliver something really quality it was something with the standards and uh, some you know we're not when it comes to aesthetics mm -hmm. you could play around but when it's you know something structural it has to be done properly mm -hmm. so he's okay, gonna take of course, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so he used to take he used to double check everything mm -hmm. every little thing he used to double check uh, I believe he had OCD for that and initially it was really uh, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's one of those uh, Characters that's probably helpful to somebody like uh, exactly. in business, right? Because exactly. even, even my own, my own grandfather, he that's one of the things he used to always say is like always trust, but always double check. Yeah, he said no, no matter yeah. what, he's like yeah, that's yeah. that's the one thing you always kind of stick with, right? So mm -hmm. and okay. I think especially in construction with foundation and then you know setting up things like that, it's it's essential. It's like one of those things that you kind of must have in order for you to have a successful you know career. And obviously, with him being, you know, having that past experience, I think life has obviously taught him along the way to exactly. to, to, to keep up those standards, right? But mm. I, I love that you're, you're telling me uh, all about humbleness and, you know, be, always keeping that 
kind of humble spirit about you mm -hmm. it always keeps you in check and always like you know exactly it, it doesn't allow you to get your your nose you know to mm -hmm. st 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 stuck up to you too high right but it is. Yeah. when you get arrogant you know what everything changes mm -hmm. so when you're humble so uh, the only way to be humble is by remembering where you came from mm -hmm. what you did like how you got there mm -hmm. and when you see another person don't actually just you know uh, push him away or tell him that okay you know why you're good for nothing or mm -hmm. you know what it's gonna take you a long time or hey buddy boy I've been doing that for 30 years it's gonna take you more than 30 years because you know I had a passion for it mm -hmm. and you're nothing because you don't know what the other person is mm -hmm. maybe it's not his forte maybe he's gonna be a really good person mm -hmm. and uh, he's gonna be doing uh, some limited set of skills but he's gonna excel that very fast and very soon maybe mm -hmm. sooner than you so you never know what the other person is capable of Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own set of skills. Mm -hmm. So, and he used to enjoy talking to me because we had uh, the common passion. We shared uh -huh. passion towards construction and creating something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to buy coffees when we were working. And you know, when uh, I'm working, and he used to crack jokes on me or crack jokes on someone, and you know, laugh and work. It was a healthy mm -hmm. environment, and we used to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you know, it, more it, it's important to have that even with people that Every you day. work with and or yeah. people that are work for you because they want to obviously to see kind of always image. have that you know yeah the environment where it's not just tension right because you're the boss is pissed off so exactly. every, everybody has has to walk with their heads you, low right with their, their put head, your nose down yeah, 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 yeah exactly right so mm -hmm. it's it, for sure I, I agree that it, when you have a happy environment I think overall it makes you, 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 you work happier and makes the workers happier mm -hmm. but then sometimes you kind of you know you, you do have to lay the law down but at the it same always time, happens in right. work but then again you should yeah. understand that it's not personal mm -hmm. if you're having a bad day at work it's mm -hmm. only because of something happened at work yeah and your personal relationship with them does not change because anything would happen it was all professional and work mm -hmm. if you'd made a mistake or you forgot something then mm -hmm. definitely someone's gonna give you shit mm -hmm. but then again you know what it's because of the work is being suffered mm -hmm. that's all it's not that you're a bad person and the other person is just undermining you or mm -hmm. giving you shit because of your personal reasons so yeah. are those principles you think you're gonna implement obviously in your business as well I Go do that. going forward okay I do that. Yeah. I, I still mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. uh, so uh, with, with Ricardo he was you know it was a big learning curve he was doing everything you know quality uh, standards and he had that his name that okay to what never never use substandard quality products or never use any uh, you know never cut corners mm -hmm. a lot of people cut corners but he actually spent more time mm -hmm. by working extra and double checking everything himself so even if I'm gonna work with any little thing mm -hmm. one little thing one switch I installed he's gonna come He's gonna check, verify everything's good by himself because one, mm -hmm. he's a boss, everything is under his liability, mm -hmm. and second, he wants to. He wants to verify that, okay, you know what? Do it one time, check it again, mm -hmm. because if there's something wrong, for you to come back all the way and fix one little thing. And take the, like, the wall apart in order for you exactly. just to check the switch. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's gonna take, take so much more labor, right? So yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of time and yeah. labor. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of money being wasted. So you know what? Spend a little more time. Uh, mm -hmm. do your work mm -hmm. but verify and make sure everything's done right mm -hmm. the first time because again you don't want to be doing all of the work all over again mm -hmm. uh, initially it was kind of annoying because every little thing I do I have to come back and check come back and check mm -hmm. and I'm like it's done right I know it <laughs> but then again you know what it kind of grew on me and I was mm -hmm. doing that and it was a good practice mm -hmm. I, and I do that in my work and my guys they tell me it's annoying and I know, I know it's annoying, but I've learned the habit to you know verify to check. So, so you're, you're almost like an yeah. old man that you know has been running this business. You kind of uh, adopted yeah, a lot of the qualities. I, and there's I nothing wrong with that, man. It's it's your business. You, yeah, you exactly. run it the way you want, yeah. it, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then again, you know what? And, and then it's also really important to have a healthy work environment because yeah. uh, when you get back home, you feel happy. And you, there's only like few hours that you spend with the family, but the majority of your day you spend with your workers uh -huh. mm -hmm. and with all the people that you work with. So when you work with them and if you're not happy working that, uh, that period of time, you're not going to be happy in your life. Mm -hmm. So just got to be happy, make a healthy environment. So that's what he did. And I enjoyed working with him. And once, you know, after a lot of time, he was also taking trips. He was going to Florida. He had a daughter in Florida. He used to go visit her. 
and uh, a lot of times I just used to take part of one project, control one project, and he was starting up a new project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he used to take some guys and work that project, and I'm at one job, and it's gonna take me another two, three weeks to finish, so I have like a few guys, and we're finishing up the uh, one in the back. So he's starting next one, and then we, I take over this project, and it's gonna take, we're both working together, and then he's gonna start the next one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm finishing up. So it was a good team, we had a good team, and you know, uh, workers are coming and workers are going. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring. I hired a uh, few more people from George Brown. I'm still in touch with them. Uh, some people moved on side of their own company as well. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, they're working for another company because they wanted to grow. They wanted like benefits. They wanted to, you know, some. Uh, I think uh, two people went to Madabee Homes. Mm -hmm. So they worked their way up, uh, which was really good. And uh, with this company, I have learned a lot not just from regular like we've done something very small mm -hmm. also something like a half a million dollar basement mm -hmm. and i was surprised like who spends half a million dollar in a basement <laughs> but the guy is rich like he he lives in florida the yeah. guy comes to you know he comes to toronto he's got his pen of suite and for his vacation for two three months he's got a cottage and within the cottage he wants to do the basement and uh, with a home theater, with a mini casino, like he had like mm -hmm. poker tables and he had his own gym and with the classes, equipments and the home theater was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he had his own popcorn machine over there. <laughs> so he wanted a lot. He wanted, he wanted to, <laughs> yeah. he wanted to have it all. Eh? Well, you know what, when you yeah. have, uh, when you have money and you have a lot of money to spend and a vacation home, mm -hmm. You do it. Well, when, when you yeah. have a vacation, you exactly. you wanna you wanna spend time. Yeah, yeah. you, 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 want, you want to have it proper too, memorable. right? So yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, he wanted to spend his money, and he was, and it's you know it's his personal choice. Mm -hmm. And um, touch wood, one day if I had that kind of money, I would do the same. <laughs> Why enough. not? Why yeah. not? So, uh, mm -hmm. so that was uh, you know my profile that well, what I was working with this job, and at that point, I was thinking one day that I. Work a lot, and I have learned a lot. I still have a long way to go, and I'm gonna learn something new every day because that's something that I'm never gonna stop. Mm -hmm. A person loves, a person learns and loves his job, uh, and if he is not learning in his job, or if he's not learning everything, or something new every day, I don't think he's human. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's human because they are, uh, some people are arrogant that, okay, you know what, I know more than anyone. Mm -hmm. I know more than what the book says. I know more than what the instructor is telling you. But then again, it's just the arrogance because mm -hmm. we're, so, we're humans. So it goes back, goes back to yeah. that, those humble style beginnings, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah. So it goes back to it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once, once you're at that phase, you know what, there's no going back. There, it's just one slam back that, mm -hmm. you know, you got a hard reality check. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking that, okay, you know what, a lot of my employers, when I start, you know, they leave everything on me, I have a lot of responsibilities, and even this, uh, the same boss, Ricardo, he had his hip replacement surgery, he was not uh, working for more than a month, and I was taking care of all his business, he's home, I was helping him a lot, and I was thinking, okay, you know what, I should probably start my own thing because if I can take care of someone else's business, mm -hmm. that probably while he's away for a whole month, yeah, mm -hmm. more than a month. Yeah. But then again, it's it's not just him; it was another bosses as well, mm -hmm. the other companies that I work for. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I should, but how? Mm -hmm. Where? Mm -hmm. I've been just working, and you know, there's a big. Uh, there is one thing that you were just working. Let's just say this is the execution of job, mm -hmm. but. Apart from this, there's a lot of things that getting a client, convincing them, pricing, estimating, planning, mm -hmm. and n uh, negotiating with the clients. And it's not just these phases. Like planning, you could, you know, I could do that too. Mm -hmm. But the other parts that I was really not into was the financial part, estimating, mm -hmm. and the customer service. Mm -hmm. Because after that, you got to give them warranty for all your work. If something goes wrong, you got to come back and fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of quality work, but then again, when it comes to quality work, it's all based on time, that you gotta spend more time mm -hmm. to get that quality work. Mm -hmm. And then again, people want stuff to be done very cheap. Mm -hmm. There's so many people out there, like I believe 75 to 80% of people uh, out there in Toronto GTA market, they would want 
uh, to negotiate and bring the price down. But when you're looking and calculating, I'm like, it was really hard for me. It's something really new to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was I was in a state of shock that okay, I'm gonna start a business, but where should I start? How should I do it? So I took some time. I'm like, okay, you know what? This one, I need to start going out there, pricing up jobs for people, and see what happens. And mm -hmm. I did that. A lot of people just told me no. That okay, you know what? Your price is too high. Price is too high. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I used to get paid this much money, and I'm, and with that same hour, if I'm gonna hire more people, the two more people, let's just say, twenty bucks an hour, twenty five bucks an hour. So three people, twenty five bucks an hour. That much time I work, I calculated plus uh, the material cost, a little bit for contingencies that, okay, you know what, something goes wrong, mm -hmm. something extras, wastage. Mm -hmm. So, and my numbers are not right. People are not going with me. I'm like, what's the reason? Mm -hmm. And it's still sometimes hard for me to believe that if I price up a bathroom, they want to do tile job, they want to do like vanity, faucets, lights, mm -hmm. paint job, new tiles, I price them. It goes from 6,000 to 10 to 12,000. But people are like, oh, I got someone better for cheaper. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm thinking it's, it's a shock for me that, okay, you know what? I priced your job for $8,000 and mm -hmm. you got someone to do it with material, everything inclusive, 6000 mm -hmm. That's a $2,000 gap. And my 8000 was mm -hmm. my labor and maybe a little bit more that I could include for, you know, mm -hmm. 500 bucks more for tiles. Mm -hmm. So 8500 your job is done. Mm -hmm. So, and that guy is offering 6000 inclusive. There has to be something different. And... I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I got in touch with my dad. I'm like, Dad, this is what's happening. And it's been almost you know, a few weeks that I've not earned something. Mm -hmm. And I'm not able to understand that. What should I do? Like, OK, you know what? I'm going to invest in a property. Let's buy a property. I'm going to invest. He's back home in India. He's mm -hmm. not here. Mm -hmm. I'm just here with my brother. So you're like, let's buy a property. Let's do a job. And you will learn on your own. Mm -hmm. So that was my first project that he invested in a property. He bought it mm -hmm. and I spent the money and I learned every bit of it, that every stage, how much money I'm paying and where could I save the money. Mm -hmm. Beautiful job, amazing quality. Everyone loved it when the house went on market. There was line up during open houses. People mm -hmm. are coming, looking at the quality job and the house was sold for you know a decent price. Because mm -hmm. uh, when it's real estate, it's something different. When it comes to you know working your uh, renovation or construction, it's something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot from that, that where I could do it. So that gave me one base. And a lot of people got to know that, okay, you know what? Just because I was at a job and I was doing, I was uh, you know under someone else's umbrella. He was a contractor, but still they were able to manage. Mm -hmm. And... I was doing a lot. Now that I'm away from someone else's umbrella again, mm -hmm. and I'm doing everything on my own, it's my company, and I'm taking care of it. It was also another big experience for me to start my own company and take that whole project from, and that I spent almost two hundred and fifty, two hundred sixty thousand dollars on that renovation. Oh, wow! Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was everything, like the, except for the exterior walls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the brick and the sidings. Everything inside the walls, like we gotta get permits, structural, uh, brand new appliances, brand new windows, all the windows are replaced, mm -hmm. insulation replaced, mm -hmm. attic, roof, uh, inside walls, ba all the bathrooms were redone, and all tiles. So it was like, like outside you see that okay, it was an old contemporary house, but inside mm -hmm. it's all modern. Everything mm -hmm. was done. So people were looking at a house that, okay, in the same neighborhood, a lot of people had the same houses because the builder, when they built it, they're all cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. But now this is something out of the box, something different. Something that stands mm -hmm. out, yeah. So yeah. when it stands out of the house, it's, it's just uh, within like a week or two, the house was sold. Mm -hmm. And the person, they loved the, the family, they bought the house. They didn't like a few things that uh, I gave something fancy mm -hmm. because within the kitchen, it's all white kitchen with the gray floors mm -hmm. and all the hardware were gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they were all golden touch. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, all the cover plate, sorry, yeah. the backsplash yeah. is all Caesar stone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the countertop and the backsplash, it's all going up top and all the wings are flowing together in a line. It was mm -hmm. expensive. But then again, I'm like, you know what? I want to give a quality product. Mm -hmm. So people, when they look at that, it's not just a cutter top. So just the way the grains are flowing, mm -hmm. the backsplash is also mm -hmm. in the same direction. Mm -hmm. It's not just like on the side. Mm -hmm. So, and the plugs, so they had the golden uh, cover plates, the, all the doors, and the cabinets, they had a golden plates. Mm -hmm. uh, the faucet was golden. It was uh, somewhere about seven hundred dollars of a faucet wow. it was expensive but then I'm what like, was the gold plated <laughs> <laughs> not sure but it was from uh, Rio Bell yeah and uh, sorry Rubinet okay mm -hmm. it was from Rubinet and they're you know expensive companies but then again I'm like you know what I want this to be the focal point because that's where people spend most of their time in the kitchen mm -hmm. and in the family room mm -hmm. so that has to be something good so the kitchen was beautiful and I also design something for myself a lot of people were like oh it's not gonna work i don't know people are gonna like it uh it looks like a massive kitchen mm -hmm. but somewhere about six feet of that kitchen is the first door it's a pantry mm -hmm. and uh i made a custom on site that looks exactly like the kitchen cabinets so all the work around all the doors everything it looks like a pantry but the moment you open the door it's powder room mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a powder room because on the main floor i had nowhere else that we could do it and i don't want to make another cubicle somewhere in the corner and then put a powder room so mm -hmm. i just wanted to you know everything to flow and blend in mm -hmm. so before the kitchen begins right beside the stairs there's a powder room which looks like a pantry mm -hmm. so did you try to keep up with like trends and everything else too just in order for you to to kind of you implement that but uh, also you probably have in the artistic touch and uh, you know background it was kind of kind of probably came natural too right so that mm. was that's yeah. probably helpful for you in, in, in that business right exactly yeah. so mm. everything went good uh, you know because uh, science I mm -hmm. used it and mm -hmm. the art and I'm using it so something creating I'm designing and giving something beautiful uh, the house is being sold uh, mm. they wanted not just the you know the gold faucet and the gold hardware to be replaced also the golden uh, light fixture that we had over the island mm -hmm. they want it to be replaced with everything stainless steel because they don't like gold mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm thinking in my head I'm like I put a lot of money all the time in this beautiful <laughs> kitchen and they want me to replace it but then again it was they wanted the house I'm like I'm probably gonna use this one in the next house next yeah. project mm -hmm. so I took everything and I replaced it mm -hmm. with the stainless steel as they wanted they loved it they're happy and recently you know they moved in that house as well mm -hmm. and in the meantime the moment you know that project was done a lot of people <coughs> started uh, taking my cards they're like okay you know what uh, could you come and look at our house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where it began I got I started getting clients because as I said it's something different when you're doing something and mm -hmm. you know how to do it but getting clients is not easy mm -hmm. so that's where a lot of clients they started seeing that okay I have done a lot of work mm -hmm. I have uh, good experience I have seen in uh, you know it's just a trend it's just like a, let's just say a stereotype mm -hmm. that if someone is old mm -hmm. and he's got gray hair he's got a beard and no matter what he was doing until yesterday mm -hmm. he tells that okay you know what I'm a contractor and he says that I've been doing that for a lot of years people just believe them because you know He's old, he's mature, he looks that, okay, you know what, he, he mm -hmm. might know something. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at a young person, you're like, oh, he's just young. Mm -hmm. So I lost a lot of clientele right there. Because mm -hmm. when you look young, and people don't just have trust, because it's not just, a lot, only a few people can trust your work. Mm -hmm. Because until and unless they look at your quality of work, mm -hmm. and until and unless they see what do you do, they're not going to trust you. It's they're going to think you're inexperienced. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's almost yeah. like when they, they, when they say, don't judge a book by its cover, but people exactly. still do, right? No people matter what. People do it. Everyone does that. What, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Everyone does that. Mm. So that being said, I'm, I'm over there. Uh, a lot of people are taking my numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone coming on uh, at the open house, I had a whole stack of my business cards and everything was gone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people left their numbers. As they're like, oh, could you ask the contractor to get in touch with me? Mm -hmm. So I got a... I started getting clients. So they started the, the the ball rolling kind of thing, right? The so, ball started rolling, yeah. and then uh, you know one job and the next job. But it's also something that every job, I learn something new. Mm -hmm. So this one recent job that I did. Uh, that job was uh, you know replacing the backsplash, and uh, they had the island which was old. It was builder grade. They made it mm -hmm. uh, regular, so they wanted like the island also to have like a stone piece mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. 
So we did, I took the job, I priced the job, and I priced the job because it's winter time, it's really competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I priced the job very low, and I, I'm like, okay, the job is in Oak Hill, this much time is gonna take me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Labor, I priced it, and they took the job. I'm like, okay, good. Let's let's uh, let's get the show going. So now what we're gonna do? You like you choose all the materials wherever you wanna go. Mm -hmm. I have uh, I can suggest you some companies. You mm -hmm. talk to them. You like them. If you like the material, and you like the products, you know what? We uh, let's look into it. So if you go to the company that I like, uh, sorry, the company that I have a tie up with, mm -hmm. I have my contractor pricing over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we get discounts. Uh, sometimes we get discounts. Sometimes we get commissions. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, I told them, okay, you know what? No matter what it is, I'll give you the discount. So even if I'm going to get the commission, instead mm -hmm. of the commission, what I'll do, you take the discount. You'll price it in a certain so way. Yeah, yeah sure. so exactly. Yeah. So you're going to save some money. Mm -hmm. You'll get the job. It's, been, it's in your benefit. So mm -hmm. they chose a lot of material from the store. They chose the backsplash tile, the island tiles. They chose the hardware because they also want to get the golden hardwares mm -hmm. and uh, the golden faucet. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything was going smooth, and they changed some appliances. Uh, being, you know, being a builder, and then you know a lot of people with the appliance stores, and they give you better discounts. Mm -hmm. So even for appliances, which is not my part, yeah. you know, they got uh, a good deal out of it. Mm -hmm. So one of my guys were taking the gas stove in and out because we're doing the uh, backsplash. So it's pushing, pushing it in, pushing it out, back and forth every day a little bit. The door went a little crooked. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, now, you know what? I don't want to give him shit because he's doing his job and it's not healthy for any appliance to, you know, pull it back and forth out. Mm -hmm. So what we do is like, we just leave it on the side, get everything done. And that's when we get back to it. And it's, uh, you know, ask the uh, HVAC guys, the gas guys to come and install it again. Mm -hmm. But they had a baby. Mm. It was, uh, I think, a few months old. So mm. the baby's few months old. They want to, you know, warm the. They want to warm up the milk. They want to feed the baby. They want to cook at home. So we had to keep everything for them as well. <laughs> so that being said, now there's like you know, a little bit of bitterness between our relation because yeah. that something went wrong. Yeah. I called the companies. Um, like you know what? This is this is what happened. Could you please come and fix it? The guy yeah. came. They fixed ninety percent, but the ten percent was not done. Mm -hmm. So they call the company again. They're like, it's in the warranty. You know, it's not fixable. We need a replacement. Mm -hmm. And they're arguing that, okay, you know what? It's a physical damage. We cannot replace it. Mm -hmm. But their argument was like, okay, if we pushed it in and out three, four times, and now the door is crooked, do you see what the quality of product that you have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a big company. Mm -hmm. And they're in a state of shock too that, okay, you know what? It's actually true. Mm -hmm. So they gave them, you know, after a lot of phone calls, by them, back and forth, back and forth mm -hmm. them and me as well. I, I mm -hmm. started that, but after that, at a certain point, I gave up because the company was not doing it. And I'm not the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So they were like, you know what? We're going to talk to the homeowner. I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That being said, they were taking part of it. They got a replacement. They got a technician who came from the company who installed it, everything done. But then again, you know what? There's a bitterness mm -hmm. because... It is done. I was ready to, you know, uh, reduce my price because of a physical damage. Mm. But then again, they were they were like, okay, it's fine. This stuff happens. We're just talking to the company, and they're mm. gonna send us a replacement. Mm. But still, you know what? It's something that happens at every job that makes you learn that what needs to be done at the next job, how to prevent it. Mm -hmm. You also learn some steps for precaution that you want to take next time mm -hmm. that I know it, that I should not have actually pulled it in and uh, pulled and pushed it in and out every day mm -hmm. but then again it was just to help them out because of the baby and you know they want to cook the food mm -hmm. sure yeah so mm -hmm. that was another learning curve that okay you know what how to have a client being satisfied not mm -hmm. just with the uh, the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. but also something which is not associated with the work. So every day, by the end of the day, we used to, you know, clean and sweep. We used to have the mats mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the front door towards the garage and towards the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We used to clean up every day, leave it because they've got a crawling baby. We don't want to <laughs> leave anything dusty, <laughs> seal everything. Yeah. So they were they were happy, but then again, you know what? There's something mm -hmm. which is fine, which is I know, uh, and I'm learning from that. And the next project that I know, you mm -hmm. know what? We'll, we'll try to prevent whatever happens and mm -hmm. 
right after this, I also have another <laughs> meeting to go. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he liked my job, he saw the house, mm -hmm. and he's seen multiple jobs that I've done because he came from one of our uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's this uh, taper, and his friend, uh, he is my taper's friend, and he saw multiple of our jobs, and he's like, you know what, I've seen your work, I've also seen your Instagram, just, you know, I've seen a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Could you please come by the house that I'm working in York Mills? I just want to, you know, take up your price and uh, let's see, let's mm -hmm. see what you have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the prices match, I really want you to do the job. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to go see what happens over there. That's okay. amazing. Well, so, so what's, what's your company called then? Uh, Kiravi Design Building. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's, okay. what's the, what, how would they find you online? Like, what is there, uh, what's, the, what's the website uh, mm -hmm. address? Uh, so right now I don't have a website okay. mm -hmm. uh, because it's still like I started my company last mm -hmm. July. Yeah, and it's not just one company that I have. I also registered uh, the Karavi, mm -hmm. like the brand. I registered right. the company, and I, uh, Karavi actually comes from my name, right. Avi, and my brother's name. Right. He's older than me, mm -hmm. but you know. Are you working with your brother now? Uh, in the, in the well, same he's company? an accountant. He helps <laughs> me with the management, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so you, instead of doing the accounting yourself, you have him do it for you. Uh, yeah. He does it. But he also helps me manage and you know some decision making when I you know the financial part mm -hmm. because he's really good with the numbers. He's really good with the finances. Mm -hmm. So when we look into the budget, he helped me allocate the amount because. I know what is uh, the prices for finishes. I know mm -hmm. the prices for the raw materials. I know the prices, how much it's gonna take, mm -hmm. how much yeah. time it's gonna take. Mm -hmm. And he knows you know, the planning part and you know, behind the desk part. So we both put our resources together and you know, put our skills together. We work with the project and he helps with it. So that's why his uh, first three letters are from his name, K-I-R, mm -hmm. and the last four are from my name, Avi. So, mm -hmm. Kiravi Design Build, right. mm -hmm. which is my company for renovation and construction. Mm -hmm. And going forward uh, for uh, new construction houses, if we're gonna do our houses, mm -hmm. I also have, uh, we have a company, Kiravi Homes, mm -hmm. right. and we have another company, Kiravi Inc., mm -hmm. and that's what my Instagram handle is, Kiravi right. Inc., so right, right now, everything over there, it's all based on uh, construction and renovation that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But in future, let's see, you know what, the market is endless. If I have another business or we're doing something more with some people, we start up something new, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be using the same brand, Kiravi. Mm -hmm. For sure, you definitely should. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, a lot sure. of meaning behind it too because it's, a, it's the two of you, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. the two brothers that are doing it together. Yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that's meaningful. So most of the stuff is available on your Instagram account right now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah. the, can they find you on Facebook or any other social media as well? Facebook, I just have it because Instagram and Facebook are connected, mm -hmm. but I'm trying because there's something when you have a company, you're running your own business, there's a lot of stuff that is in club. Yeah. So, you know, liability insurance, there's uh, payroll taxes, which mm -hmm. he, you know, everything he takes care of, but mm -hmm. there's so much involved. There's WSIB, there's, and every day when I come back home from work, mm -hmm. I'm still working because I gotta sit with my brother and I gotta work on the paperwork and all the invoices that it's, we had. It's part we gotta of document. Own, running your own business, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We gotta document all the invoices, mm -hmm. all the receipts. We gotta mm -hmm. put in together mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, for the taxes, mm -hmm. we need, we have to. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it's your own company, you have less sleep and it's really stressful, which is very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we are hustling at a job or to get a job, it's something different because you're working eight to five, nine to five. Mm -hmm you have a set of hours and your weekends are your own exactly but when you have your own company you don't have a day the <laughs> yeah. weekends are gone forget the forget the weekend so, so you're, you're, you're not living for the weekend anymore <laughs> I, I think that that's I, one, one of the things that uh, a lot of people need to realize is that when you're working for yourself yeah you, you, you never really have a day off even when yeah. you're away on vacation right like you were telling me mm -hmm. like the other the first guy that you used to work for right i mean if starts, stuff starts to go down, if you're a good owner, you need to yeah. be mm -hmm. hands on. You need yeah. to be involved, right? And that's, exactly. yeah, and that's sure. it's one of the things that you you don't really. It's I think it's it's a different mindset almost, right? That you have to mm -hmm. implement in order for you to be successful as a business you have person to. too. You and have you said to. yourself, you you learn every single day on the job all, with all the all, everything absolutely. that happens, right? So yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure even the you know Ricardo the the 35. Year old, the, the thirty-five year <laughs> veteran, veteran, right? So yeah. I, I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure, yeah. even he he learned yeah. this, uh, some new stuff every single day, right? So well, he does that too. I, I think that's kind of it's, a part of human nature for you to yeah. to learn stuff. And when you don't learn, life exactly. teaches you. Like like you know yeah. the the example that you have with almost losing your finger, right? So it's mm -hmm. life. Well, life is the biggest teacher. He's the biggest teacher. Like no matter what you do, life will always teach you anything that you have. Like 
no matter what industry you are in, no matter what you feel they're in, mm -hmm. uh, even if in, it's education or your work mm -hmm. or family or relationship, life will always teach you. It's mm -hmm. the biggest lesson. If you don't learn from your own life experiences, mm -hmm. you know what? I don't know when you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something very easy. Sounds, uh, sounds very easy, mm -hmm. but self-realization about your own mistakes mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. And within the past, like last few weeks, I've self-realized a lot of uh, myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about myself, uh, some mistakes that I make in my personal life, some the way I act, and uh, one of my really good friends, he pointed out to me that, hey, you know what, you should not be doing this one because, you know, it, it is perceived and received in a different way to some mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, huh, I never thought of that. It's, it's important to have those friends that yeah. can mm -hmm. call you out on your own bullshit, right, sometimes. Yeah. But because, because I think that when you come, it, it comes from somebody you don't really know as well, yeah. Yeah. It, you don't really value it as much. You take but it the wrong way. When, when yeah. some, it's somebody who you're close with or somebody who's, who you've had a relationship for a long time, yeah. Yeah. it's one of those yeah. things you're like, oh, yeah, shit, like I need to, I re I need to realize, I need to actually mm -hmm. like, you know, step back for a second and, you know, Look, look at it from a different perspective, right? So it's mm -hmm. always have to. And if you don't do it, then you know what? You're going to be making the same mistakes all over again, and mm -hmm. uh, stuff is not going to be. Well, life yeah. is just going to keep teaching you until you learn, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it's almost until, like that. Yeah, until you learn. <laughs> until you yeah. learn. But uh, there will be some day that, you know, everyone realizes something, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, you know what? Yes. You know what? It's absolutely true that, okay, mm -hmm. you know what? I should not be doing this one. Yeah. And I realized it, and I'm working on it. And which is, uh, I, I feel it's good. It's mm -hmm. good for me, and it's gonna be good for my future. Mm -hmm. That okay, you know what? Whatever it is, I am learning. Mm -hmm. I realize something in myself. I'm gonna work on it, and let's see how far we go. I mean, it, it sounds like you have a very bright future, to the, you know, ahead of you because Definitely. you've had that experience of you know the very extreme in, in a bad way and a, a very good <laughs> in a good way with Ricardo because Ricardo, mm -hmm. you know, is. Has the, he was so meticulous with, with everything that like he, he's mm -hmm. done, right? So, yeah. and, and plus, you've kind of, you've bounced around in, in the different the spectrums of, of construction world. And it seems like, you know, you you have that drive, you have that dedication, you have that willingness to, to you know, take the, the extra little steps, even whether it be like, you know, trying to go back and fix a mistake that happened because of, you know, the things that were outside of your control with like that stove, right? Exactly. It, it, even then, I mean, it's, it's, it's I think it's it's important for, you know, it's it's like it's like going back to what you said originally. It's it's important to stay humble, right? Mm -hmm. No, no matter how high you get, you, right. you kind of always have to have that, you know, realistic perspective on life too, and, and like always. not 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 be, you know, up, up in the clouds and you know. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> gotta stick to your roots. You gotta stick yeah. to your roots. 